on the 31st of March 1993, Brandon Lee passed away, only 28 years old. But what happened on that day? Well, you have a million conspiracy theories out there, but I'm here to put an end to the discussion. I'm here to tell you exactly what happened the day that Brandon Lee passed away. So Brandon Lee, obviously he's Bruce Lee's son. He grew up partly in Hong Kong and partly in the US. His family moved to Hong Kong so Bruce Lee could pursue his movie career. So fast forward in time, Brandon Lee turns out to be this tall and handsome actor. He knows Jeet Kune Do, which he taught from Bruce Lee in Hong Kong, and he speaks Cantonese. So he is a star in the making. And he starts to pursue a movie career in Hollywood. And I saw him the first time, I think, in uh, the movie Rapid Fire. And then I saw the movie Showdown in Little Tokyo with Dolph Lundgren. And immediately I thought that, I oh, man, this guy, this guy is something else. I mean, he has everything it takes to become a superstar. He's a good actor. He knows Jeet Kune Do. He's proficient in martial arts. He looks good. He acts good. He, he has everything, the total package. And he's Bruce Lee's son, to top it all off. So, I mean, this was just amazing. So his career is going great. He's a superstar in the making. And now he gets offered the role of Eric Draven in The Crow. Now, this is his big break because this is a big budget movie. The plan was to make a trilogy out of the movies. And he was just becoming a household name at the time. But tragedy struck and in the making of the movie he got shot and killed but what happened on that day so before you can understand how brandon lee got shot and killed during the making of the movie you have to understand how guns work and you have to understand how movie making works so obviously in a movie like this you have tons of explosions and tons of guns so usually a production of this size has a gun expert or several gun experts but in this case they didn't they had a prop master that was responsible for the guns in the movie so when the time came to film the scenes with the guns the prop master would come with the guns and with the blanks and with the dummy bullets so in this scene where the bad guy is holding up his gun he's using a pistol and a pistol has an open chamber and when you have an open chamber you can see the actual bullets in the chamber so you need a dummy bullet you need a dummy bullet to put into the chamber or else it would just look stupid right he's uh, putting up the gun against the camera and you see into the chamber that is empty but that doesn't work so they need a dummy bullet in the chamber so usually it's a piece of plastic or a piece of metal or something that they manufactured in pre-production that looks exactly like a bullet that they put inside the chamber. But in this case, the prop master had not gotten a hold of the dummy bullets in pre-production. So when time comes to film the actual scene, there is no dummy bullet. And the prop master has to rush it on the set. He has to make a makeshift dummy bullet on set. So him and his assistant, they get like this Frankenstein dummy bullet. And by the way, I've talked to the crew members that were there on that day that saw this actually happen. So this is first-hand information that you're getting, guys, okay? So anyway, they filmed the scene with the dummy bullet. Everything is going great. Now it's time to remove the dummy bullet from the chamber and put in the blank. Now, this is usually where the prop master cleans the gun, maintains the gun, gets it ready for the next scene. But this fucking moron of an idiot did not do his job. He simply scraped out the dummy bullet. Remember, the bullet was glued inside the chamber. He scrapes it out. He doesn't get everything out. He leaves pieces and fragments of the bullet inside the chamber and he puts the blank in ready for the next scene. Now the next scene is where Eric Draven is shot. So the gun is given to Michael Massier, the actor, and he points it at Eric Draven and he shoots and Eric Draven dies. Well, in this case, Brandon Lee collapses and everyone thinks he's acting. They're like, what's going on? 
And Brandon says, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And immediately they understand that something is wrong. Initially, they thought that the squibs were the cause of him collapsing. The squibs are, you know, the fake blood that splatters all over the place. But it wasn't. And they couldn't understand what was going on because he didn't have any wounds, any visible wounds on him. So obviously they called the ambulance. The ambulance get on, gets on the scene and they rush him to the hospital. And 12 hours later, he was in surgery. They tried to keep him alive. They tried everything. They literally could not find the fragment that had shot him. And 12 hours pass and he's pronounced dead. And they do an autopsy later. That's when they found the fragment. And that's the fragment that you see right there now. That is the actual fragment that was inside Brandon Lee. Remember, it took an autopsy to find it because the fragments was so lodged inside of him. It actually went through his abdomen and into his spine. That's where they found it. So the police initiated an investigation, obviously, into the production and into the crew. So they talked to everyone. They actually got a gun expert to actually replicate what happened. So the gun expert did exactly what the prop master did, you know, made this makeshift um, dummy bullet and let the gun go weeks and weeks and weeks without being maintained or cleaned. And he shot the bullet just like in the movie. And just like in the movie, the fragments flew everywhere. And he actually said that it was more dangerous than a regular bullet because the fragments flew everywhere everywhere okay more dangerous than a regular bullet so this fucking incompetent prop master hadn't cleaned the gun for weeks and weeks i mean if he just spent two minutes of his life cleaning the gun we would not have be having this conversation right now and brandon lee would be alive so i mean this guy i know his name i'm not going to say his name right now but what happened is that he never, ever worked on a movie again in his life. So this fucking incompetent idiot of a prop master never again worked on a movie for the rest of his life. So some justice was done. But obviously this won't bring Bran Lee back. I'm not going to say this guy's name, but he's a fucking incompetent idiot and deservedly did not work on a movie again for the rest of his life. So Linda Lee, Bruce Lee's wife and Bran Lee's mother, she sued the production company and they didn't even fight it. They knew they were responsible for what happened and they settled out of court and Linda Lee was awarded a bunch of millions. I don't know the exact number, but millions, millions and millions. So obviously this won't bring Baron Lee back either, but it's some justice that is done because they admitted responsibility for what happened. So what can I say, guys? I mean... This could have been avoided so easily if the guy had just done his job. I mean, I'm pretty exhausted from doing all this research, but finally we got to the bottom of this case. Now we finally know exactly what happened on that day. So if I had a time machine, I would go back and I would bitch slap the fuck out of this prop master and tell him to do his job. But you know, that's life. And people, of course, they draw similarities between the death of Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. And I can tell you it's just coincidental. It was just a tragic event in both cases. In this case, Brian Lee had no choice. He was accidentally killed. In Bruce's case, he took a calculated risk. And that's life sometimes, you know? You have to take some risks in life. That's just how it is. So um, in a few weeks, it's the 31st of March. It's the 26th anniversary of his death, actually. I can't believe it's been 26 years. It feels like yesterday I heard the news the first time, you know. My thoughts go out to his friends and family. Obviously, this is a very tragic event. There is no conspiracy theory here, guys. It's just one of those tragic events. And luckily, we were left with his legacy. We have one of the greatest movies of all time out there in The Crow. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And thanks for listening, guys. See you later. Bye.